the diamond I realized the that I'm here to be This is one time I am wearing it. The Empathy Museum presents A Mile in My Shoes. Now, shoes I have here, a pair of men's shoes, they're deck shoes, in fact, they're size eight. They have leather uppers. There's white stitching around the foot area, the toe area, I should say. They have leather laces. They're quite well worn. They're sort of a dark blue, slightly turquoise color. Uh, there are very strong leather laces, a different color from the shoe. They're a sort of brown lace, quite worn. The interior is leather, it looks padded and quite comfortable. So they should be comfortable to walk in. They look a pretty good practical shoe, I'd have thought. These shoes belong to Danny Bullman. This is his story. Hello, my name's Danny Bullman and I work on the River Thames. The River Thames is the bloodline through London. To see London from the river just gives you a complete unique perspective. And my family have been on the River Thames for over 400 years. The Bullman family originally came from Russia many, many moons ago. They settled over in the East End. They were boat builders uh, a couple of hundred years ago. And also drudgermen. When the ships would come up the Thames, they discharged coal. They would row up, get the coal, put it in the barge and then sell that coal on. So that's what my family was a few hundred years ago. When you first go on board a vessel, the first thing that they asked me was, who's your father? And my dad's Billy Bowman, and a very well-respected man on the river, and he's a lovely bloke, and I love him to death. My mum never wanted me to go on the River Thames. She always wanted me to go into banking and earn lots of money. But unfortunately, I wasn't an outstanding pupil. Yeah, I used to like making the kids laugh. They always said if I applied myself more, I could have achieved so much more. But I got apprenticed when I was 16, and it was the wake-up call from hell. It was five o'clock. I think it was like a January morning, and my dad's dropped me off on this Greenwich Pier, and I'm climbing around the side of this barbed wire fence because obviously the gates weren't open at that time in the morning. Everyone else was completely sane and in bed. And I got dropped off around the corner, and my dad's waving me goodbye as I'm walking down the pier onto the River Thames. And I remember there being ice on the ropes, and this bloke's come out of the wheelhouse. He said, who are you? And I said, um, well, I'm Danny Bowman. He went, who, you Billy's boy? And I said, yeah, I'm Billy's boy. He went, well, jump on board, son. He said, the kettle's on, go and make me a cup of tea. And that was it, we set off and went and collected a load of rubbish out of all the other boats. And that made me realise that yeah, maybe I should have listened to my mum and became a banker. <laughs> When you do your apprenticeship on the River Thames, it's drilled into you how important you are. And you'd be petrified. You'd be 16 years of age. You're surrounded by 500 years of history. And they would bind you into the River Thames. And they'd have a piece of paper where they would rip in half. And then you'd go off and learn your trade. Then after five years, you came back. And every inch of that River Thames you had to know. Every single inch of it. Your lights, your sound signals, your reaches, your bridges. Where it was deep, where it was shallow. Your tides, everything. I come afloat in 1991. I was 16. I weighed about six stone and I was with these two old guys. They seemed like they were 70 then and they're 70 now. They was eating cheese and drinking a glass of red wine at lunch. On the tug, this dirty, filthy, rotten tug. And I'm sitting there watching these thinking you're completely mental. And I want to go to the cafe and I want to go and listen to music with my mates. And I'm sitting there with these two old boys eating cheese and drinking wine. And I was in this tiny little dock, moving these barges around, taking it out into the big River Thames. And then these big tugs were taking these barges away. And I was thinking, where are they going to? Where are they going to? And then the call come through, right, Bowman, you're out on the tugs now. I was like, oh no, I've got to go out on the tugs. Where am I going to go to? So I went on board this tug called the Sea Challenge. And the only time I was allowed into where to drive the boat was when I had to clean the floor. That's like Dickens, isn't it? And then we set off to East Tilbury. It's only like 15... 20 miles down the river, do you know what I mean? But for me, when I was 16, it was like, oh, Kathmandu, it was just like, it was just unbelievable. I was, going to the, I was going to the arse end of the world. It was amazing, unloading these barges full of mud and then towing them back up again. I thought we was gone for days and we was only gone for about 18 hours. 
they say that travelling broadens the mind and, and it really does and I don't think you should be restricted on going anywhere or doing anything I travelled to the Philippines down through Brazil and I've travelled to Nepal to the base camp Everest if, if I could give everyone a thousand pound to at least get out of the country and go and see a different place it would open their minds and their hearts uh, much wider than they could ever imagine So the River Thames has gone from a working river to a place for pleasure. You've got the pleasure boats, the Thames clippers and the ribs. To paint a picture, back in the day, there was 25,000 dockers. There was 6,000 lightermen working on the River Thames. They said you could walk across the Thames on barges. That's how many barges were laying next to each other. To live pre-1970, before the real decline, it just must have been amazing. I suppose I was about 19 before I went to work on the pleasure boats, doing the guys. It's over there, your left hand side, you've got the Tower of London, over in 1078 by William the Conqueror. Telling absolute lies to these poor unfortunate tourists that had come from different countries with pockets full of money. We would take the hat off and then walk around and practically beg them to empty their wallets into our hat. And then we'd go and spend that gleefully in the pub. I was working with this guy called Bertie Prout, and he's probably one of my most favourite people in the world, without a doubt. When I first met him, I was 19. I wasn't allowed to go in the pub with him, none of the apprentice were. He unfortunately lost a kid, maybe about 10 years before. He lost a boy over the side, so he didn't like apprentices drinking with him. Did I like Bert? He was stopping me from drinking. Did I like him? I loved him from day one. Absolutely adored him. He used to make these curried mackerel sandwiches. He said his mum used to make them, but I think he used to make them. And he'd come on the boat and he'd always say to me, you got any food? And I'd go, nah. And he'd mutter something under his breath and go, yeah, and hand his sandwiches to me. We was on this boat called the Viceroy, and it was an old Dunkirk veteran boat. And I hated that boat. I couldn't stand it. I detested that boat. You'd have these little old ladies sliding around the deck on these little orange plastic chairs that they used to put in children's schools and they'd be sliding around the decks, looking at me in despair. I'd be trying to do a commentary. They couldn't look out the window because it was too high up, and the window was all misted up because the boat would overheat. And um, Bert would have the wheel, and he'd be standing there all proud and proper, and his immaculate white shirt, and his tie done up with its winds and not, and it'd be freezing cold, and I'd see all these other beautiful pleasure boats coming up, and, and I'd look along in the wheel boxes, and all the captains and the boys would all be laughing and slapping each other's back. And it just seemed like, I've been put on this for a purpose. It must have been something I've really done bad in a previous life. And Bert would just look at me and go, you all right there, boy? And I'd go, yeah, 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 fine. I'd never let him know. But, um, you know, I hated every minute of being on that boat, but I loved every minute of being with Bert. He used to teach me these old songs. Mary was a servant girl, she lived down Jury Lane. She had a good old master and a mistress was the same. One day a sailor came rolling home from sea. He was a cause of all her troubles, all her misery. He be it in a pub, a be it at work, be it at a wedding, a even at a wake at a funeral. One thing that I like ben is communication. I like being with people. I like being with people, making me laugh. And those guys that I met on the River Thames at the early age are still my friends today. You've got two families on the River Thames. You've got your blood family and you've got the guys you grew up with that you trust with your life and that will be with you till the day you die. Or the day they die, hopefully first. <laughs> If it be a girl child, then bounce her on your knee. And if it be a boy child, send the bastard off to sea. The thing that I suppose really bothers me is looking at what the world's becoming through the eyes of getting old and being English. It's definitely changing too much, you know. When you do your apprenticeship, it's drilled into you how special this job is. The skill of working on the River Thames is revered around the world. The speed of the tide, how busy the River Thames is to deal with all different kinds of vessels, cargoes, tides, weather conditions. That's why I used to take five years to do it. And uh, in 2007, they got rid of the Thames Walkman Lightman license. And that, for me, was another part of England dying. Another part of England that we'll never retrieve again. They've now opened up the whole licence into the whole of Europe and that means that anyone from around Europe can come and work on the River Thames, which is fine, that's more than fine. But it's got to be reciprocated in both ways. Sorry, it's a tough one for me because where I want it to be open for everyone, 
I still want to retain the values of it and retain the heritage of it and I never want that to go. I want everyone to enjoy what I have but at the same time respect the values and keep the licenses as they were and keep the traditions and the values. So being English is quite a tough thing, I think. <laughs> if you speak to any old lightman, they'll tell you they love going to work on a Monday morning. And I must say that when I first got apprenticed, I couldn't wait to get to work. I used to love every minute of going to work. I loved every single minute of it. And that's changed for me quite, quite a bit. Yeah, I'd like to come off the river, I think. Because I want to earn some money. <laughs> <laughs> The reason that I want to come off the river is because life has so much more to offer. I'm not accepting that I'm just going to work on the River Thames. I want to stretch my wings. I want to see the world and work around different places of the world. Perhaps I could do that on boats, but um, I've been on boats 20 years now. I think that's enough. Danny's story was produced by David Waters. His shoes are part of a growing collection of footwear hosted by the Empathy Museum's A Mile in My Shoes exhibition. The shoes and stories come from all over the world. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to find out where we're going next.